Welcome to another salesing.com rules discussion. In this series, we're breaking down the 2021 to 2024 racing rules into manageable chunks to make them easier to digest. We'll use a topical approach rather than slog through the rule book page by page. We'll also use lots of examples and ask questions to keep you engaged. Today's topic is fair sailing, which is the foundation of our self-policing sport. In keeping with our topical approach, we'll cover everything in the rule book related to the concept of fair sailing, including definitions and sections of parts one, four, and five. Our sport is somewhat unique in that the competitors are expected to self-police the rules. That's why the concept of fair sailing is so important and is emphasized in four places in the rule book. The first is the preamble to section one, basic principles. Take a moment to read the preamble. Let's dig into this with some questions and answers. Here's a controversial one to start with. Is it okay to excuse another competitor from following the rules? What do you think? It's tempting to excuse someone when they foul you, but consider two things. First, you may not care if the other boat doesn't take a penalty, but other boats in the race probably won't like it, since the boat that fouled you would lose places by taking a penalty. Second, excusing a competitor erodes respect for the rules, which is the foundation of fair sailing. Next clarification. What does it mean to promptly take a penalty? Where is this covered in the rules? Rule 44.2 covers penalties at the time of the incident. Read the, ex read the excerpt from this rule. Here are some examples from the World Sailing Casebook. Case number 138 gives general examples. First, an action that directly affects the fairness of the competition, and second, failing to take a penalty when you become aware of breaking a rule. Case 47 uses an example of a boat that hailed starboard when she knew she was on port. This was an attempt to gain an unfair advantage over a less experienced boat. This is a violation of Rule 2. Case 73 describes an incident where a leeward boat's crew on a trapeze deliberately reached out and touched a windward boat's deck and hinted that the windward boat should take a penalty. The leeward boat was disqualified under Rule 2. What about this question? What do you think DNE stands for? DNE is a disqualification that is not excludable. The score can't be used as a throwout. This comes from Appendix A10, which gives all the scoring abbreviations, and from Rule 90.3 Bravo on scoring. The list on the right shows all the scoring abbreviations in, in, in Appendix A10. Remember that the penalty for breaking Rule 2 is a disqualification that you can't throw out. So if a protest committee finds that you broke Rule 2, expect to see a DNE on your score sheet. Another rule related to fair sailing is Rule 4, Acceptance of the Rules. Take a moment to read the rule. In summary, this rule says that by competing, you agree to accept the rules and any penalties imposed by the process. You also agree to ensure your crew and support persons are aware of their obligations to follow the rules. Here are two clarifications for Rule 4. First, the definition of support persons. Note that it includes coaches and anyone else supporting the competitors, as well as parents or guardians of competitors. Second, here's a question. Can a coach that is not racing be penalized under the rules? The answer is yes. The coach or any support person can be warned or excluded from the competition. The boat being coached can also be penalized 
for a coach's actions if this gives the boat an unfair advantage. The misconduct rule, Rule 69, also involves the concept of fair sailing. This rule is in intended to cover serious breaches of sportsmanship. Take a moment to read the rule. The rule defines misconduct as a breach of good manners, good sportsmanship, unethical behavior, or anything that brings the sport into dis disrepute. We'll give some examples on the next slide. Misconduct violations are serious, and the national sailing authorities have banned sailors from competing for year-long periods or more due to the misconduct. Misconduct allegations are not handled in the normal protest process described in Rule 63, but rather in a process described in Rule 69. The description of misconduct in the rule is somewhat vague, so let's take a few minutes to think about examples. What kinds of behaviors do you think constitute misconduct? The case book gives a list in case number 138. Note that these actions include both serious or repeated violations of the rules, as well as other behaviors such as bullying, violence, and foul language. Finally, what do you think you should do if you see examples of misconduct at a sailing event? World Sailing has a guide for handling misconduct. The link is in the, is in the description. The guide states that you can report the incident to the protest committee or to the organizing authority for the event. You can also report it to U.S. Sailing. U.S. Sailing claims to have zero tolerance for abuse and misconduct. They ask that people concerned about an incident report it to U.S. Sailing. The website has a submittal form. In summary, we've covered four places in the rules that address fair sailing, which is really just sportsmanship and following the rules. I hope this discussion has given a better understanding of the emphasis on fair sailing in our sport. Thanks for watching feel free to comment. If you like our content, please subscribe. And don't forget to visit our website at salesing.com.